Studios Original. And welcome to Web Crawlers. This is our mailbag episodes where we play your voicemails and read your emails. I'm Ali Siegel. I am Melissa Stettin. And I, producer Maria. Do we have any new reviews? We do, because we're finally over a thousand. Woo! Baby! We have one from Ed is Cool. Just ah. the nicest. I'm fond of these dear ladies. Oh, that's sweet. This is from I, listener Emma. Love this pod. You crazy people deserve these five stars. Oh, that's sweet. This is from Amanda Lynn 9686. All three of these ladies create the best atmosphere. They're so funny. I regret binging all the episodes because now I have to wait. I mean, that is, that is, that sucks. I know this that feeling. This is from Butt Itch 90. <laughs> <laughs> love it. Love it. <laughs> wow, wow, wee wah. Holy smokes, bimbos. I think I'm review number 999, which upside down is 666, which is very nice. And also related to the <laughs> fan art I made for y'all, blong.com if you're nasty. Oh, yeah. Blong.com made that like Satan's. Oh, yeah. Satan is a vibe art that I reposted. I friggin' love y'all and really just want to say the Teen Girl Squad to Web Crawley's fan pipeline is real. Trogdor, hashtag where's Craig, hashtag how's he doing, hashtag Maria is the cutest. Okay, bye. Oh, Mar- Maria's the cutest. Maria's the cu- hashtag Maria's hashtag the cutest. Maria's the cutest. It's trending. <laughs> this is okay. from the Reister. My new besties always love it when my notifications tell me there's a new episode. Guaranteed to bring a smile to my ears. Do yourself a favor and support them on Patreon. The video versions are even better. Yes, yes. You've got one from Great Britain here from Alice SDR. Okay. Ooh. You saved my life and my mom's and my whole town. Five stars. <laughs> I can't explain why, but these three girls with their with with this hilarious, genius, insightful podcast saved not only saved not only saved my life, but my mother's and her new husband's, my next door neighbor and their neighbor. It's just that good. Thank you, Allie, Melissa, and Maria. Wow. Wow. Also, if you missed on the main episode, we announced our winner for the Patreon. It mm-hmm. was Amanda with the the username Stupid Loser sixteen. <laughs> so good! <laughs> congratulations! Congratulations! Yes, congratulations! Well deserved. Well deserved. Okay, well, time Let's play to some get into these voicemails. Here we go. This message is for the web crawlers. This is Kelly from Houston, Texas, and I am calling because, guys, um, I know some people don't like synchronicities, but this is the weirdest synchronicity or the weird synchronicity. So I'm currently wearing Allie's Golden Girl shirt that I ordered from Hot Oh, sick. Thanks. Horse, if you're asking, <laughs> and I am. So, um, and I just got a text that Betty White died, and um, that's so sad. But it's crazy because I just randomly put on the shirt because I just washed it for the first time, and it's absolutely heartbreaking. Um, so I don't know. I don't know. Um, if, hopefully, the shirt has nothing to do with it. I, I don't think it's Allie's fault, but Betty White, I, yeah, I don't know. A national treasure has passed away. All right. Love you guys. La, la, la. Bye. Yeah, that's sad. National treasure, Betty White. Yeah, it's she gone. lived such a long life, though. Crazy. My God. Good for her. She really was a was a wonderful woman and did such good, amazing things for animals. Yeah, she did. Web crawlers. <laughs> that's supposed to be an air horn. Um, hey, ladies. So I, I know this is like not exactly on topic, uh, as far as web crawlers episodes go, but I'm in Ohio. Uh, Amy from Ohio. Uh, I know there's a lot of us. Amy's from Ohio, but uh, probably the weirdest of them. Uh, I'm going to take credit for that. Um, I want to say that we have a lot of Amish in the state of Ohio. Oh. And I've noticed something like when the Amish guys come over to like do work, like a couple years ago, they built a deck. Um, it's so much cheaper. It's so inexpensive. Um, 
Well, you know how, like, the electricity thing and whatever, their Amish religion is, is uh, their version of Christianity is very interesting. Um, but I don't know how it is that they're allowed to have Mountain Dew in the volume that they drink Mountain Dew. There are <laughs> Mountain four Dew. guys on, working on our desk a couple summers ago, and I stopped counting Mountain Dew cans after 18, and that was one day. So wow. the other day, we went to give them some of my son's uh, white male Pekin ducks because um, we had too many guys-to-girl uh, ratios on these desks, and they were, you know, overworking the ladies a little bit. So the honors that my father-in-law knows were, said they would for sure take three ducks. The ones that dropped them off, they had Mountain Dew, Code Red cans everywhere, hot <laughs> Cheetos, Ooh. like Costco size bag of hot Cheetos, and I guess that's like their vice. So I wonder if you know anybody that like knows much about the Amish that can explain. Like, is I mean, I guess it's not really technology; it's like a product of technology. But like, how is it? That's their vice. But like, I- I'm just wondering if you know anything about it. If you know much about the or any of the listeners know anything about it. That's all I wonder. Uh, thinking about it because they're going to come do a roof for me, and I'm like, well, maybe I can bribe them by having Costco cases of Code Red Mountain Dew. <laughs> discount, but, okay, I just wanted to know if anybody knows, what's up with the Amish drinking Mountain Dew like that? Bye! Okay, so Amish, a lot of Amish people in Ohio... That's true. And they love Mountain Dew, Code Red, and Hot Cheetos. Huh. I mean, this is, if you Google it, there's a lot. A lot about Mountain Dew and the Amish? They call it Amish water. It says, I heard the Amish go crazy over Dew. Has anyone else heard this? They call it Amish water. Why? That's so weird. What is with that? Okay, so this this past Friday, I watched some local Amish in front of a vending machine, and I was wondering what was taking them so long was thinking they weren't sure what to do. Anyways, once they got their sodas to drop down, they walked off with a bunch of Mountain Dews. Huh. Oh, okay, okay. It says, I heard they aren't supposed to drink dark-colored liquids, so Mountain Dew is a loophole. What? Oh, that's interesting. Well, if you're Amish, well, you can't use technology, so... I don't know if you would be able to listen to our podcast. Maybe there's some Amish on Rumspringa who would be able to tell us. Oh, yeah. I'm actually like, this is like the one thing that I'm super interested in. (laughs) Yeah, why Mountain Dew? I remember in elementary school, we went on a field trip to like an Amish community. And it was the weirdest thing because they don't have technology. And it was it felt like we just like time traveled back into like the 1800s. I want to go to an I want to like uh churn some butter. Yeah. There's so many articles about the Amish and Mountain Dew, but there's not any reason for it. I wonder if that dark liquid thing is true then. Yeah. If someone I honestly like please call in and let us this needs to be the new Austin Powers thing. So if you know, <laughs> please call in and let us know about this Amish and Mountain Dew thing. Huh. You're more likely to catch an Amish fellow with a cold can of dew than a <laughs> cold can of dew. Cold yeah, you gotta do it. FYI, while we're while we're recording this episode, I am ordering so much Indian food. What do you get? <laughs> just in, if anyone wants to just imagine you know what I'm doing. Are you getting some naan? I get. I actually only get rice when I don't get naan. But maybe oh, I, I will naan. this time. Love garlic. I naan. love naan. Yeah. Okay. I, I usually don't. I usually get naan. Uh, but not, but maybe yeah. this. Maybe this time I'll get some. <laughs> some naan. <laughs> um, I oh, have molly kofta, dal makani, a mango lassi. What's Molly Kofta? It is uh, deep fried vegetable balls served in fresh cream, tomatoes, and onion sauce. Oh, wow. I've never had that. What's what's the do- what doll did Spi- you say? Spice I've- lentils. Okay. Oh. All right. That sounds I only good. get mm. I only get vegetarian Indian food. Okay. Okay. All right, we can continue. Well, continue. <laughs> continuing. Hi, uh, message for the web crawler. Uh, long-time listener. I've been listening since day one. Wow. Sorry, there's a car passing. <laughs> it's embarrassing. Um, <laughs> it's really embarrassing. That's really anyway, embarrassing. Uh, 
thank you for everything, all the content you guys put out. I'm a uh, Bimbo subscriber since you guys first made that an option. Wow. Um, I'm also the guy that, Ali, hello. Uh, I um, commented on one of your Instagram posts that I have a web crawler themed deck that I use in Magic the Gathering. Oh what? my God, yes. And, uh, the Magic the Gathering Arena app. Not only am I nervous, I'm jacked on caffeine and a little stoned right now, so I apologize. Um, He's been drinking those Mountain Dews. Uh, <laughs> just as I'm calling you guys, I'm seeing a breaking news that Jiz Lane Maxwell has been convicted. Yes. Um, I tried calling six or seven months ago uh, with a suggestion for an episode for you guys, uh, if you're willing or hopefully interested in doing it. Uh, Jeffrey Davis. Uh, Jeff Davis has multiple stories about Jiz Lane. Uh, he used to hang out with her, and um, I heard him discussing it on a Harmontown podcast. Pretty interesting stuff. So, suggestion for an episode. Get Jeff Davis on there with some Jiz Lane. Max Lowe story. Okay, thanks. Bye. Hong Kong. <laughs> wow we should definitely do that okay that's interesting yeah i'll have to listen to that episode of harmontown okay next message hey web crawlers i'm calling from michigan Ooh. uh i didn't think i was ever going to work up the courage to call in um congrats i still don't think i did i'm sweating right now <laughs> um but I felt like I had to because last night I did a dab or two and I got too high. <laughs> and I was trying to think of something that was comforting. So I watched the Web Crawlers Live award show from last year. <laughs> and Melissa played a clip of Allie doing a Bane impression, oh, no. which was like spot on. Um, and then I played a random episode today, like a random old episode, and Allie was talking about Bane again, and <laughs> that's my name, Bane, B-A-N-E. I don't know if he spells it like that. That's his but, name? But, um, yep. Yeah? That's, uh, yeah. not the reason I was calling in. Uh, <laughs> cool. I'm also a big fan of John Tenney. Oh, yeah. yeah. he's great. Um, we all are. And I also have a huge crush on Allie. Oh, he messaged me this. Yeah. Uh, Bye. (laughs) Bye. (laughs) It's so cute. He messaged me like the other day being like, I left a really embarrassing message. And like, (laughs) if you don't want to play it, please don't. And like, I'm really sorry if I offended you by saying I had a crush on you. And I was like, oh, my God. No, our listeners are so cute. Like, they always leave a voicemail and then are so embarrassed. (laughs) I'm so sorry for calling you, even though you asked for us to call you. (laughs) No, anyone. We all are. We all give your our consent. If you have a crush on it. Let us know, baby. Us know. We need it. We need it. These are dark times. <laughs> yeah. Next message. Hey, web crawlers. This is Joran calling Hi. from Dallas, Texas. How are Woo-hoo. you? Good. How are good. you? Oh, good. Glad to hear <laughs> it. Um, so I'm midway through the uh, compliance uh, strip search oh, yes. episode. So you may mention this stupid little fact but you're talking about the uh the experiments um that sort of show how people tend to comply to authority figures and things and they don't want to rock the boat Mm -hmm. and um i remember when i watched the movie compliance and was really you know freaked out by it i was looking looking that stuff up and so it's the milgram experiment is what it's called and um yeah like you said i think Maria, you're talking about shocking people in another room, and that's it. And then this is uh, just a little stupid fact. And then I realized, hey, isn't there a Peter Gabriel song called Milgram something? And um, so everybody loves the album So by Peter Gabriel, right? Uh, in your yeah, eyes. Yeah, Big right. Time and all of that stuff. But there, oh, is, yeah. there are two weird songs on there, and one of them is we're do, We Do What We're Told, Um and in parentheses, um, it says Milgram 70, whatever year it took place in. Oh. Uh, no, Milgram's 37, it said. So that must have been the number of people who uh, who did what they were told and shocked the people. So anyway, just out of all of that, I wanted to make sure 
we got a mention of Peter Gabriel in, <laughs> yes. and how uh, he's we need related that. to we need that. the uh, strip search at a McDonald's. Okay, that's all. What a jumbled mess that message was. I'm sorry. But, <laughs> Not at all. Um, God bless. Bye. Yeah, Peter Gabriel, We Do What We Told, Milgram's 37. Wow. 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 <laughs> That's crazy. All right. I've got to mention a Peter Gabriel, finally. Yeah, we needed Someone it. Someone brought it up. We've been waiting. Okay, next message. Hi, this message is for the web crawlers. This is crazy. Um, I'm calling because that lady called about her newborn being like a witch, she thinks. And I <laughs> yeah. called like last August when I went to Lich Horse, that place where Zach Bagans went. And I found out that like while I went to visit the haunted house, I was pregnant, but I didn't know. Oh. And my older daughter... I visited the Bell Witch Cave in Tennessee when I was pregnant with her, and she turned out to like grow up and just be like a wild, crazy child. So I think the Bell Witch had something to do with that. <laughs> so now I'm concerned that I went to visit the haunted house while I was pregnant and didn't know. So now this baby's gonna be like crazy, haunted by ghost girls too. All right, goodbye. <laughs> <laughs> That's so weird. That's crazy. <laughs> Yeah, your your kids are gonna be haunted. I'm so sorry. Being pregnant makes her crave haunted houses. <laughs> <laughs> Some women crave pickles. She craves yeah, haunted, she houses. A haunted house. <laughs> Hi, this message is for the web crawlers. Uh, this is Annie calling to tell you a, a story about my imaginary friend. Uh, Good. So <laughs> recently, I was talking to my sister, and she's like. Someone said that most imaginary friends were actually ghosts. And I, like, thought about this for a second. Uh, I was like, yeah, that makes perfect sense. Sure. Um, I mean, so it checks out. When I was, like, three or four, I had a very serious imaginary friend. He was a little boy named Tommy. <laughs> um, we, and, like, to me, he wasn't imaginary. He was there. We, like, hung out all the time at my house. He went to the park with me. He went to my grandma's with me. He was a little boy. I could explain him perfectly. He was his brown wavy hair he wore a striped t-shirt cute kid anyway i guess when i was like a little bit older my grandma approached me she's like we don't hear about tommy anymore whatever happened to tommy and i looked her dead in the eyes and i said oh he died and like oh my god my family was like creeped out i was must have been the creepiest kid anyway i'm thinking about it now as an adult there was a little boy who was hit by and killed by a car in front of my house when I was around this age. So I don't know if Tommy was something I created to like cope with that, or if it was the ghost of the actual kid that was killed in front of my house. That's like, a ghost. either way, creepy um, and weird. But like to me, at the age of three or four, four or five, it was perfectly normal. Um, I just thought you guys would like to hear the story. Uh, it was weird. Um, and now I'm kind of curious about if that kid really existed or not. So anyway, thanks for creating great content. Keep it up. Love you guys. Bye. Ooh, that's a ghost. That's pretty wild. That's, that's a ghost. Pretty wild. That's a ghost right there. I never had an imaginary friend. I didn't Did you either. Have one? No. no. Bummer. I wanted to have one. Like, I wanted to see something that was, like, fun yeah. and magical. It's yeah, really also- crazy when you think about it. Just kids, like, imagining another person there, like, playing with them. That sounds crazy to me. That I would, like, if my kid did that, I'd be like, no, no. Go, <laughs> yeah, go in time out. We don't do that here. <laughs> we don't do that here. <laughs> <laughs> It seems, and people who like remember their imaginary friends, that's, that's crazy to me. That seems crazy. Yeah. Hi, this message is for the web crawlers. You guys are awesome. My name is Madeline and please forgive me. I'm a fast talker, even when I'm not trying to get the double, uh, dreaded double voice. Uh, (laughs) So first off, Beanie Babies. Never actually collected them and never actively collected them. But I was a tween in the early 90s, so literally every birthday gift I got came with a Beanie Baby attached to it. <laughs> oh, my God. I was God. like 16. I had the opportunity to spend the summer in Switzerland on a study abroad, but I was like $1,500 short. So I decided to sell that, like, inadvertent collection of Beanie Babies. Wow. My friends told me that I was crazy. They would go, only go up in value. I'd regret it if I did it. 
but I did it. And I got $1,700. Wow. And it's more like the next day, the Beanie Baby bubble burst, which is yeah. a really fun thing to say. Yes, queen. But Girl I, boss. I was a good that was a pretty good deal for me. Yeah, that's so, amazing. One quick spooky story before I go. Uh, for about a year and a half, I worked with a girl who believed she was a psychic medium. Uh, she'd tell us about all the ghosts where we worked. It would cleanse the place after a terrible client, et cetera, et cetera. I don't believe in that kind of thing, but she was extremely sweet. So I was friends with her. And one day as I was leaving, she was coming in for her shift. And I said goodbye to her. And she said, goodbye, get home safe. And then she stopped, turned around and looked at me and said, no, seriously, get home safe. Oh, no. I kind of like nervously laughed it off because, again, I don't believe in that stuff. But as I'm walking through Manhattan, I did have my head kind of on a swivel because like, oh, what, what does that mean? What's going on here? So I'm crossing the street with the light and a voice in my head just says, look. So I turn and I look and there is a mail truck barreling towards me. Oh. And it clearly has no plans to stop for this light. I moved quicker than I have ever moved in my life. Got to the curb and the truck absolutely ran the light. Um, if I had not looked, I, I would have been killed. I just would have been completely flattened. New Yorkers, literal New Yorkers, stopped to tell me that they were bracing themselves because they thought they were about to see someone die in front of them. Oh, my God. I mean, oh, my I God. I believe in that stuff, but I believe that one specific person. <laughs> and you better bet I bought her lunch every single time we worked together from that point on. Anyway, <laughs> you guys. La, la, la. That's crazy. crazy. Wow. Oh, my God. That's so scary. I do wonder why she didn't just say like, hey, why don't you hang out for another 10 minutes? <laughs> yeah. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> like something bad's going to happen. To you. You're so almost you, going to get hit by a mail truck. Like, yeah, if you knew. If you knew, what did you say? I mean, it depends if she just kind of yeah. felt. I guess maybe right. it was that she just kind of felt something. Yeah. But yeah, if I if I learned that like, no, I saw be the care was barreling toward you. I'd be like, well, why didn't you just tell me? <laughs> yeah. Well, also, I wonder, though, if like. It would happen regardless of right. if you stayed okay, another yes. 10 minutes. Right. Like if it's like no matter what, it would have been something else. You know, I don't know. Mm-hmm. I don't know how that stuff works. I don't know how like fate works. But uh, Final destination. Yeah, it, yeah it'll, find it'll, it'll find you. It'll find you. It'll find you. It'll find you. Just like it follows. Uh-huh. Hi, this message is for web crawlers. I just called not too long ago. I didn't say my name or anything because I was nervous, but I'm Taylor. And... um. I was just calling because I was listening to your Noid episode about <laughs> the, the noid. about the Noid. And um, Maria, I think, mentioned that she liked the thin crust. And I was wondering if any of y'all had ever had St. Louis-style pizza. I'm from St. Louis. It is a very thin crust, and it comes with special – it's like a special – local delicacy we call it provel cheese it's a mixture of like four different cheeses and it's super savory and it melts it like sticks to the roof of your mouth and most most people hate it uh i was just wondering if you'd ever had it i will send you one from this place called emos and you can do a review of it that would be sick i won't stalk you you can send it to have me send it to wherever you want i would love for you to try some st louis style pizza all right thanks bye I've never had this. This, this looks, looks good. good to me. It's cut. Uh, it's cut. Annoying. Oh, the squares. In squares? Yeah, it's cut in squares. I like squares. Oh, squares I don't like are it. fun. You got to cut squares when it's that thin. Yeah. Oh man, I, it looks good to me. It's almost like it's on um, a piece of like naan or like uh, it's very pita cracker or like cracker bread. Yeah, crust. cracker bread. Provel this looks good. Cheese. What I've was the kind of cheese Provel. again? Provel. Provel. It's a combination of cheddar, Swiss, and provolone. Oh, fuck. sounds good. That sounds What's, good. Who's oh, having man. a problem with this? I don't <laughs> have a problem with this. Yeah. Give me a oh, it's on gold belly. A problem. Oh, it's on gold belly. Uh oh. You can get a Provel cheese block from Emo's Pizza on Gold Belly. It's the crust is made without yeast, so that's how why it's so thin. <laughs> we gotta do we gotta do when this pandemic oh, ends no. we have to do a web crawlers um like conference and there has to be like two hours set aside where we just pizza taste yeah. or just food taste like hot dogs like it has to be mm-hmm. a um well that'll be called? another hour the other it will be two hour one hour will be hot dog <laughs> tasting 
No, but what is it called? Like, did you ever like in uh, elementary school where everyone brought in the dish from their heritage or family, their family's favorite dish, and then you went around yeah, and got oh, had a look? Oh, yeah. That's like what we need look. to do. Yeah, we. Oh, that's the word I was looking for. We got to do a potluck. Yeah. That okay, here's really the thing nice. is I want to try a St. Louis pizza, but I don't want 10 of them. Right. <laughs> is Gold Belt you can only order? Yeah, there's like pack six packs 10. and 10 packs. I, I don't have room in my freezer for 10 pizzas. But you have neighbors, don't you? Yeah, I'm not going to go door to door giving people pizza, <laughs> the <Maria>. pizza lady. <laughs> <laughs> It'll be like, I'll show up on next door being like, did that crazy lady come to your house and just give you a frozen pizza? This pizza looks good. Okay. Next. Oh, now I'm pissed. Now I want pizza. I have messages for web crawlers. Uh, it's Taylor uh, again. I just called. I feel like I need to sort of tack on some clarification about my last message. So emails where I was talking about, they do send, like, they ship out frozen. Oh, we know. Oh, we know. <laughs> but it's frozen. You might have heard about, it was a pizza that Simone Biles was really loving. And I don't know, oh. got us some headlines. St. Louis never gets any, uh, any good headlines. Anyway. Um, so I just want to clarify that it would be frozen. And, you know, it won't, <laughs> it won't get any food poisoning or anything. Uh, so let me know. Thanks. Yeah, Simone Biles has Emo's Pizza waiting for her. They sent her a care package. Emo's IMO. Wow. Huh. Well, maybe Emo's will send us free pizza if we tag them in this episode. Simone Biles eats pepperoni pizza after every meat. So it doesn't wow. matter if I win. If I win a gold after every meat, I have pizza, pepperoni pizza. <laughs> Good for her. She deserves That's nice. it. That's fun. That's nice. I cannot look at the Gold Belly website without like getting so angry and so hungry. <laughs> I know. It's the best website. It's it is best. so fun to look at and waste your time on. Okay. Now yes. I'm on desserts. Now I'm oh, on the dessert no. section. Oh, fuck. <laughs> oh, fuck. Oh, I'm going to call. Hi, this is the web crawlers. Um, it's me, Allie. I'm so sorry. Right. Um, I'm just like, finally has me off and I'm like in the same month and like oh my god like like this all stuff is recent so I can like you know I feel like I can comment on it now um but um I'm calling you again it's fun talking to you guys even though no one responds to me um back, so you know, I'm just talking to myself but anyway um I just wanted to say shout out to Melissa oh, uh, for uh, your Griselda Griselda episode Griselda. um how you pronounce um, all the names of the Colombian cities perfectly. Like, oh, thank oh my you. God. Oh. Like, I was like, wow, she's a native speaker. <laughs> and um, then when you pronounce Bogota, um, Bogota, <laughs> I was like, oh, she's from Jersey, right? <laughs> um, because in Jersey, we have Bogota, New Jersey. Um, and I had been pronouncing it Bogota the longest time, but Bogota? it doesn't have an accent, so it is its own name. They're special, I guess. Um, yeah. Oh, oh my God. Also, um, that just reminded me when I was in New Jersey that we are the only state in this union of the United States, um, to not pump our own gas. Oh, that's and right. And it was recent. I think like 2019. And 2019, um, it was it was us in Oregon um, for the states for states that don't pump their gas, and then I think Oregon like made it like yeah, it's legal now. That's lucky. Um, I like and it. I think the rule was made up because like early, back in the early days of like gas pumping, um, no one really knew what they were doing, so like a lot of people were like setting shit on fire and causing explosions. <laughs> So I guess, you know, they had people who were like, quote unquote, trained people who work there who know that kind of stuff, um, rather than just people like, oh, let me pull up to this. So um, Jersey doesn't trust us because they think we're stupid, but probably because it's about like, I, I was like 18 when I learned how to put my own gas and like, I still kind of get nervous. So, you know, I just like, yeah, fill up regular, point regular cash. Oh, no, thanks. And like, I don't know. It's just, I, I like it. Um, <laughs> so, yeah. But um 
you know, I had something else I wanted to say, and I was, I was like, oh, I got to say it now. Um, and, of course, I forgot it. So um, you guys just have so many interesting topics, and I'm like, yes, I relate to that. And my friends and my husband and my family, like, they don't listen to podcasts. I'm trying to get them on podcasts, baby steps. But maybe I should just start recording voice memos and then sending emails. So- <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, Jersey's the only state that doesn't, you can't pump your own gas. That's cool. I wish I didn't have to pump my own gas. That's nice. It's definitely nice in the winter months. You don't have to stand out there freezing cold pumping the gas. Oh my God. That's that's the worst. That's the worst. Oh, wait. I think there's a part two. Mm -hmm. (laughs) This is for the last callers. Again, I'm so sorry, but this is the last one. I'm sorry. I, I, I just wanted to talk about two really big things. And then I talked about one really big thing. And then um, the second thing, I completely forgot. I, I just think it's so funny. I'm leaving so many. And if none of them play, that, that would be so fucking funny. But um, for my life. Uh, so, yeah. I, I hope, you, like, if you do ever play these, like, they are interesting um, or relevant or, you know, adding to the conversation. I don't know. But, yes. okay. So, to the one big thing. Well, okay. So, there were three things I wanted to talk about. And... I, um, I forgot the one last thing, so maybe I'll just email it or whatever. Anyway, I'll fucking get to What's what happening? I want to call for before I get hung up on. So, um, I also wanted to say, like, you know, Colombians are very cool. <laughs> They're very innovative. <laughs> and, cool. you know, we've, we've gotten a lot of shit done. I mean, you know, look at Griselda. If only we could put that towards positive things, maybe people would, you know, respect us more. Um, which we deserve to be respected more. But, um... I just want to say, like, even as of, like, 2019, which is the last time I was able to go to Colombia, um, my grandma's from Barranquilla, which is, like, right on the coast. It's close to Cartagena. Um, Cartagena. Um, I just love that, Melissa. You said it so well. Um, but anyway, um, so I, I live there. It's where Shakira's from, Sofia Vergara, oh, Edgar Renfri, Shakira. all those people. So it's, it's a very, like, beautiful, very populous city. Um, and... There's a lot, I think it's in the whole city or like a majority of the city that you cannot ride a motorcycle with two people. You can't, you can't have a passenger on your motorcycle. Um, and it's because of the motorcycle shootings that literally oh. are like, literally that's such a Colombian way to fucking kill people. Um, you know, there's a oh. Colombian necktie and then there's the motorcycle shooting. Um, but I mean like, it's pretty innovative. You know, it's like the poor man's, like, um, sniper or something. Like, you just drive up on a motorcycle, and then, like, um, but it's not good to kill people. But, you know, people people call it the third world country, but, hmm, Colombians came up with that, United States, okay? That's true. All right? So, so don't fucking talk to us. Anyway, oh, my God, I think I'm getting close to ending and actually saying bye, not continuing with another message. So thank you guys for listening. Um, if you ever do play these, I'm so sorry for the amount of them. If you don't, um, let's just pretend this never happened. All right, I love you guys. Sorry. Oh my god, I get to say bye. <laughs> Yeah, the col- we, the episode on Grizel de Blanco, the drug lord lady. They yeah, they invented the the motorcycle drive up shooting. Like it became popular. Wow. In Colombia. That's crazy. You can't have two people on a bike there. It's wild. Wow. Well, last message of the day. Hello. This message is for the web crawlers. Um, my name is Jenny, and I've been a patron for about a year, but I've been slowly working through the backlog. Sorry, I'm taking a walk and it's freezing. Um, if I have any heavy breathing, it's for my words. But um, I'm an artist at NASA, actually, and I came across your Flat Earther episode, and we get so many comments about Flat Earth stuff um, on, like, all of our NASA animations, like, why does it have to be CGI? Like, why can't you just take a camera up there and film it? And I'm like, no, come on, <laughs> use your brain. Um, I just wanted to say thank you so much. I was literally working on the... Um, live broadcast for the web telescope and all those graphics and stuff wow. well, I was listening to your episode cool. and it was just deeply satisfying to have all those uh, corrections pop in so thank you very much I am terrified I'm so nervous I have a talk on the phone um, thank you guys so much um, I just did the podcast and I can't wait for more keep, keep it up thanks guys bye 
She said she was an artist for NASA. Yeah, that's awesome. Oh, I thought she said scientist. She uh, said because she, she talked about doing the graphics and all the stuff for. <laughs> then she's she's probably a, an artist. Then. Well, a scientific <laughs> artist, a scientific artist. Wow, How someone cool. from NASA calling in and listening to that's our show. pretty sick. That's cool. That's neat. It is really okay. neat. <laughs> you know, we're all like <laughs> really neat. That, <laughs> that was neato. Cool. That was cool. pretty neato. Well, that was the last voicemail of the day. Of the that day, our, Melissa, of, of all our time. Period. Of all time. That was the last message. We're all caught up after years. <laughs> We're finally it's, caught up. And if anyone's saying, well, mine wasn't played or something, it is because either it didn't come it through was bad. or it was it was choppy or we couldn't hear it. Yeah. So if you did call in and it didn't get played, just know that that's, that's what's up. Wow. So guys, you gotta call in. We're we're depending on you for this yeah. for the for the mailbag episodes. It's all it's all I mean, we have you, emails. We, we have emails. We do have emails. That is true. So you know what's funny is like sometimes I'll be checking the the email like the because it comes through the big ones podcast email and it will start ringing like my Gmail will start ringing and I'll just think to myself like what if I just picked up the phone. While these people are calling in to like leave a message, because you know how people call in, they're so nervous. Yeah, hello, yeah. and the people would just be like, "Oh no, oh my god!" <laughs> you would just ruin. You would traumatize people. Yeah. You would try. They they would just hang up. You know, in a, in a second, they, all they would do is just hang up. Yeah, they'd be like wrong number. <laughs> yeah, that's amazing. Uh, all right, guys. Well, please keep calling in. We love you and your voicemail so much. I am Ali Siegel. I am Melissa Stettin, and I produce your Maria. All right, bye. An Elio's original. Powered by ACAST.